Bonjour, mesdames et messieurs. In today's episode, we take this photo and we turn it into this. Come and join me for a little bit of digital blending. Bonjour. Welcome to episode 47 of my photography Lightroom and Photoshop tips. My name is Serge Ramelli. I'm a French photographer living in the beautiful city of Paris, but this is in English. Okay, last week I showed you how to retouch a landscape photo from start to finish. Here you can see the before and the after. I like to show sometimes, you know, when I take photos, really my full workflow. We're going to do something similar this week. We're going to take these two exposures. That's the before photo. That's the normal exposure. That's the under exposure. And we're going to turn it into this. So let's get started and let me show you how I do this. Bonjour, mesdames et messieurs. So I want to show you a retouch of a photo that I did um, last week as I was shooting my workflow package. And um, I think it's an interesting type of photo. It's, uh, we are very little morning, the sun is coming behind the building and I had this idea of framing the bench and just the lamp on the Pont des Arts. Pont des Arts is a wooden bridge which usually has thousands of people on it. But when you come there at 6.57 in the morning, well, there's no one there. So. Let me show you how I retouched this. The first thing is I took the first photo. I actually did some bracketing. This is a normal photo and this is the same framing but just a bit underexposed. So I'm going to take my first photo and I'm going to do my usual stuff, which is uh, if you follow me for a while, you know that I'm going to put up the shadows. Check this out. It's amazing what hidden information you have in the raw file. Look at this. This is the shadows. This is the highlights. All right. Now you see even bringing the highlights at 100% um, it's still too bright. So I'm going to try to do the uh, ND filter. So I'm going to do the ND filter. I'm going to press the option key, click on reset, get my exposure to go minus and uh, make this a bit, a bit darker. But you see, I still don't like how it is there. That's why I'm going to use the underexposed photo. Um, now this is too bright. I think the shadows are a bit too bright. So I'm going to get the shadows a bit less. Yeah, I still want a sort of a morning feeling to it. Now the white balance is completely off. So whenever there is a sun, I have this formula, which is to go on shade. A shade is kind of cool, but I think it's too green. So I'm just going to take out some green and add some magenta. But that's something like that. I kind of like that. Okay. So next I'm going to go to um, profile. I'm going to enable the profiles correction. I'm going to enable the chromatic aberration here. And I'm going to do some post crop vignetting. Okay, so that's my usual stuff, right? Uh, I'm going to go and um, look if there is a lot of noise. Yeah, it's pretty noisy. It's pretty noisy photo. So because uh, it was a bit too, uh, too dark. So I'm going to get noise around like something like 30 uh, colors around uh, 15 or colors is going to take care of the color noise. So yeah, 30 and 50 and sharpening. I'm going to add some sharpening. It's funny all these locks here. This is uh, the reason why you have these locks. In case you don't know, is that uh, you know Paris is a very romantic city, and the whole idea is that you come with your wife or your girlfriend, and you put a lock there, and you throw the key in the Seine River, and as long as the lock will be on that bridge, your love, your love will last forever. I don't know if it's actually true, but the concept is nice. So that's why there is all these locks and it actually started only like four or five years ago and it's just like full of locks. I think you have that in other countries too, but Paris is always Paris. It's very special. Okay, so uh, let's get back to our retouching here. So sharpening around 90 noise and don't forget when you do the sharpening, always do the masking. I don't like the grain stuff in the, you know, it gets grainy in the sky here. So the option key and the masking to the right until the ceiling is the ceiling, the sky is totally black so that the sharpening is only on the white parts and the white parts is only anything which has contour in it. Okay. So that's kind of cool. I like that. Uh, and uh, now I'm going to take my second photo, which is here and I'm going to click on synchronize and I'm going to synchronize everything. Okay. So now let me take uh, this one. So I've synchronized everything, but now it's too dark. So I have to, I'm just looking at the sky here. So I'm going to get the highlights back at zero by double clicking. 
I'm going to get the, the op open up the shadows even more and maybe boost a bit the exposure. I'm just looking at the sky here. I'm not looking here. Of course, I mean, it's kind of a nice photo, but it's really too dark and it's going to get too noisy. But something like that is cool. I prefer the sun here than here. Right? Uh, it's just a bit more detailed. It's, it's subtle, but, you know, that's how it is. You know, uh, good photos happens on subtle things. Okay, so now I'm going to right click, edit, open as layers in Photoshop. What that's going to do is open one Photoshop file. Oh, click open anyway. One Photoshop file and both photo uh, will be open, each one on its own layer. And then I'm just going to blending, blend both. We call that a digital blending. It's, uh, it's a way, you know, to get around the fact that cameras, you know, have limitations these days, you know. Okay, so I'm going to take, this is a dark one. I'm going to call it dark. This is the light one, uh, normal one. I'm going to call it normal. I'm going to put the dark layer on top and I'm going to create uh, a mask, but I'm going to create uh, a mask by just clicking here. It's going to be an empty white mask. So, so far, as the mask is totally white, anything that's on that layer is visible. Now I'm going to take my gradient tool, which is here. I'm going to make sure that my foreground color is black by pressing the X key. So foreground color is black. I'm going to click on the gradient and I'm going to take the second one, which is black to transparent. And remember that when you paint with black, which is what I'm going to do on the bottom of the photo, what's going to happen is that it's going to, when you paint with black, anything which is black is going to make invisible what's on that layer. Now you see there's just a little bit of black and it's gray and it's white. I want more black. So there's two possibilities. I can just make the gradient a bit higher up like this. Okay. That's better. And another way, which I find is fun is you click here on the mask. And you press Command L and you get the levels here. And check this out. If you go on the right, it gets darker. And so it appears, so it's going to hide more of that photo. If you go on the left, it does the opposite. It's going to get you more of the uh, underexposed photo. And that's the way I'm going to mix both photos, just making sure, you know, until I've got something that I like. Okay, that's kind of cool. Check this out before and after. I just, no, I don't have a burned photo. I've got the details. It's, I mean, I know it's subtle, but you know, I hate to have, you know, the sun being just a big white point with no information, just white, you know, I like to have a gradient. So now I'm going to take both layers. I'm going to press command E to merge them together. I'm going to create a duplicate and let's keep on going. I want to take care of this. I don't like these flares here. Now the fastest way to take care of that, that I find is just a good old stem tool. I'm sorry, which is the S key, clone stem tool. Okay. And uh, I'm just going to make it a bit bigger and I'm going to sample here. And so I clicked on the alt key to, uh, to take a, a source point. And now I'm getting it to match here and I'm just going to paint one time like this. Okay, perfect. I'm going to do the opposite. I'm going to click here for the alt key. Now it's going to give me a preview. I make sure that preview is completely aligned. And I'm going to paint here one time, uh, second time here, a second time here. Okay. This is going to be rough, but I'm going to click here. Okay. Paint here, here, here. All right. Now I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to click here. And, um, now I need to, I'm going to right click. I need to make my, the hardness of my stamp at 50% because, uh, it's, it's going to be too soft for this part. So let me click. So I'm clicking here on alt and I just want to, no, it's too big. I'm going to make it small. Let me zoom in a bit better. Okay. I just want to get this out of the way. So I'm going to click here. Okay. And make this a bit brown. Now I know it's way too much, but it's okay. All right. So I made this very dark. So I'm now I'm going to get the harness back at, at, um, at zero percent to make sure I have got a soft, thing. Okay. I'm going to make this like this and, and let's continue. I'm going to make this here. Okay. Take this out. And if, if you've got repeating patterns, you can just take them out. Okay. Now I'm like at 200%. So if I zoom out, uh, you see already, 
it took a lot out, you know, but you, you still have uh, uh, some colors which I don't like so much. Here, for example, you've got magenta and things like this. So how to take care of that? Well, uh, I did most of it with a stem tool. Check it out before and after, but there is still a bit, you know, weird color cast here. So I'm gonna create uh, U in saturation, okay? And I'm gonna click, um, I'm gonna take this tool and I'm gonna click here on this color, okay? And I'm gonna desaturate it, okay? Okay, that doesn't work so much because desaturating it makes it gray. And so instead of having, uh, you know, a magenta spot, you've got, uh, you know, a gray spot. So that's not cool. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on Colorize. Okay. And I'm just going to change the color. Okay, put it brown. I just want the color to be like the bridge was a little bit, you know, something like that. Okay, perfect. So now everything is colorized. So we don't want that, of course. So what I'm going to do is go I'm going to click on the mask and I'm going to invert the mask. Okay. And then I'm going to take a white brush. So I'm, I'm taking a brush by pressing B and making sure that my foreground color is white. And I'm, I'm going to paint some of that brown here and here just to get the colors a bit out. Okay. Check it out before and after. Now it's still too bright, so I can just click on it. And this time I'm gonna get the lightness to go under. I just want attention to be taken off of it, okay? So that's cool, and I can maybe click here also. You know, here. Okay, check it out. Before, you see how it's like glowy? And now it's, it's hard to see. Uh, you see it a lot less. So that's just one way between the stem tool and that's just one way to get your attention off of it. You see the eyes goes to the, you know, the whitest part of the photo. And so it, they come to this one. Okay, next and last, I'm gonna create an empty layer that I'm gonna put into overlay mode, take a brush. And, uh, and this brush, I'm gonna get the black as a foreground color, make sure it's, my, my brush is at 20%. And I'm just gonna, Dodge and burn. I'm going to make some part of the photo be darker, especially here, for example. Okay. Uh, now that's way too much, but that's fine. I can just lower the opacity of that. Okay. And I'm going to make another one uh, overlay mode. And this time I'm going to go press X, go to white. And I just want to add some white here on the buildings to make it a bit, uh, you know, more appealing, more contrast maybe here a little bit. Okay. All right. Now, uh, I find that the whole photo lacks of contrast. So basically now I can just finish it off in Lightroom. So I just press command W save. I've used Photoshop for what it is to take out the, the flares mainly, right. And to melt both, uh, to blend both exposure. And now I can just finish up in Lightroom. I can just again, open up a bit of shadows, bring down the highlights, uh, add some clarity, some vibrance, uh, maybe that's a bit much, and saturation. Yeah, and then, you know, it depends, you know, I like when it's a bit way over the top, I think this is maybe a bit too much. Uh, yeah, a bit too much vibrance, but something like that. So let me show you the before and after. So I'm going to take the first photo and I'm going to click on reset. Okay, and the final photo and pressing C to compare both photo. So that's the before and that's the after. It's quite a major change. You see now we have some stuff going on in the, in the, in the clouds. And I just, overall, I just love that photo. I really uh, dig that photo. And I wanted to show you how I did it using Lightroom and Photoshop. Now, I want to show you a little clip that I uh, did to show you my new workflow uh, podcast. Before I use a clip, it's just a one minute clip. Um, I just want to answer a question that I got. Uh, like, what's the difference between your new workflow package and the Lightroom course and the Photoshop course? There is a major difference. The, the Lightroom course is really to get somebody to learn Photoshop. Uh, sorry, to learn Lightroom, for example, or the Photoshop to learn Photoshop. The workflow course is exactly uh, how I actually work, how I retouch the photo for real in real life. Okay, it's not trying to teach you Lightroom or teach you Photoshop. It's trying to teach you how I work if you like my type of work. Okay, and that's one thing. And the other thing is that it's also, I show you how I take the photos. 
I have a cameraman with me who's been shooting me while I was shooting. So I show you, you know, how I compose my photo, how I do my settings. And I, you see, every photo for me has its own retouching style. Even so, the steps are pretty similar from one photo to another. Every photo is a different challenge. I mean, there's 10 ways I could retouch this photo. So seeing a photographer taking the photo, having the raw file and retouching it, I think uh, even if you know the basis, I think you will learn some stuff. Anyway, I'm very proud of this course. It took me months to do it. So here it is, my full workflow course. Bonjour, mesdames et messieurs, and welcome to this uh, full workflow course. My name is Serge Remeli, and I'm going to take you to Paris. I'm going to take you to Israel and show you exactly how I work from shooting, compositing my photos to post-processing. Many people ask me, but you know, what settings do you use on your camera or how do you do your framing? That's why I wanted to show you how I take the photo and how I retouch it. Here you can see some of the projects we're going to be doing. We're going to be doing panoramas, long exposures. We are going to do some very uh, night photos or early morning photos. You will see exactly how I use Lightroom and how I use Photoshop to get the results that you can see here. So come and join me in this training class. Okay guys, so I hope you liked that tutorial. As I showed you in this video, I just released my full workflow video. I have been working on months on this video and it's very different from what I've done so far because I really show how I take the photos, I give you the raw files and I show you how I post-process them. It's really something I would have loved to get about eight years ago when I started into photography. And I tried to make this for beginners or for advanced. So it's really, for me, the most, the best tutorial I've done so far. You can download it on my website. It's, uh, it's actually $67, but for now it's going to be $47 because this is a release price. So please check it out. It also helps support to do this free weekly podcast. Thank you very much and I'll see you next week.